So let's do a one example problem talking about the conservation of momentum and how you guys may use it as you progress through your engineering career. So conservation of momentum here uh, is used to help us to design what type of restraint we need to have in place for the for this type of pipe. So what type of bolt would you need in order to hold this setup in place? So here we have water flowing through a pipe. This is a elbow, a 90 degree elbow at 30 kilograms per second. So it's a pretty substantial amount of water flowing through here. And uh, you know this is a there's a horizontal uh, or a vertical distance between the inlet here and the exit of 40 centimeters of this bend. Uh, what we want to find, and let's go ahead and neglect the weight of the water and the elbow compared to the momentum flow, they're, they're small. Let's go ahead and find what the pressure at the inlet of this pipe is, and then once we know that, let's find what the force is acting, or that we need to restrain this type of um, setup. So the first part is find pressure at the inlet. The inlet being here at the bottom where water is coming in. Okay, so here this is the inlet. So let's find the pressure at the inlet here. Well let's think. I think a good rule of thumb for you guys is if we want to find pressures we would need to use our energy equation, our velocities. Not always, but for the most part. And if we want to find forces, we are interested in using this momentum equation, okay? So P1 over rho g, since we're interested in finding pressure, I'm going to go ahead and write down our energy equation. And then we'll simplify it to solve for our pressure at our inlet. But before we do that, we're going to need to select what our uh, inlet and what our exit are for this set system. So let's do that. So our inlet here, let me go ahead and make this red. First thing I'm going to do is I'll select the inlet. So I'll say the inlet is 0.1. And I'll say the exit is over here at point two. So it's open to atmosphere at point two. So let's simplify this equation now. So we, we know we have we want to solve for P1. Velocity one and velocity two. Hmm. What do we do? We know we have a velocity at one, we have a velocity at two. Well, since the diameter is constant, so dia is constant, that means the area of the pipe is constant. Remember, so let's recall mass flow rate in the pipe is rho times the cross-sectional area times the velo average velocity. So if we have mass flow rate coming in equals to mass flow rate coming out, and we know that density times area times velocity, if the density doesn't change for this water as it comes in and out, and if diameter is constant, areas have to be constant, so velocity in has to equal to velocity out. Or velocity 1 is equal to velocity 2. If they're equal, then they cancel out on both sides of this equation. We do have an elevation difference, but we're going to set Z1 as our zero point. We have no pump in our line. We have an elevation at point two of 40 centimeters. So we do have this. We do not have a turbine in our line, and we're assuming we're going to assume no losses, okay? Just for simplicity. As you get into your fluid mechanics class, you can start assuming losses, and you actually get into quite a good detail of how to calculate those, but that's kind of beyond the scope of our course here, and we'll we'll just assume that there's no losses for all of our problems. So P1 here, 
what well let me let me mention one thing here too okay um, so in this energy equation and for our momentum so for conservation of momentum okay so for conservation of momentum we need to assume that all pressures so all pressures are engage okay and this is because we're assuming and it makes our analysis a lot easier um, because atmospheric pressure is just acting everywhere on these type of systems so we're going to assume that all the pressures are engaged pressure so P2 which is atmospheric pressure at the exit the gauge pressure is zero so P gauge P2 equals P gauge atmospheric which is equal to zero all right so what do we have here we have that the pressure at point one is equal to rho g z two density is one thousand gravity times z2 0 0.4 so our pressure here at point one is 3.924 kilopascals and this is in gauge pressure okay which is what we're interested in in these type of problems so the next part of our question is asking us what is the force needed to hold this in place so let me go ahead and write the conservation of momentum equation here based on our Reynolds transport theorem so we have all of our accumulation within our control volume okay and another thing to mention here is that this is a vector term okay so we can't just analyze it in any direction we want like we did with mass and energy we have to take into account the direction here of our flow and that's going to play a big uh, a big role in our calculations so I'm only going to consider and let me go ahead and draw a coordinate system so this is going to be our x this is going to be our y okay so our x direction some of the forces in the x direction we're going to assume that everything is steady okay so this is steady so we have no accumulation in our system in the x or the y direction this beta term is a correction factor it's just given as 1.03 it's to, it's to make some corrections as to the approximation that we're doing here and uh, you can read more about that in your text if you're interested so some of the forces here is going to be equal to in the x direction some of the momentum so mass flow rate times velocity coming out of our system minus some of the mass flow rate times velocity in our system that's what this equation is saying here so uh, rho a v that's so rho so let me circle this rho a v that's our definition of mass flow rate okay and this tells us if it's positive or negative if they're both in the same direction that means it's coming out if they're in opposite directions that means it's coming in that gives us it a negative for positive sign this dot product okay so what do we have coming in and out well mass flow rate is the same for both cases and we only have one inlet and one exit so velocity out minus uh, velocity in okay coming in 
into the system well let's see I made I did an assumption here that I shouldn't have now the next thing I skipped a step here actually so uh, what is the uh, momentum of our stream in the X direction coming out what do we have coming out in the X direction well we have nothing coming out of the X direction okay we only have something coming in in the X direction. So what we're going to say is the sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to minus mass flow rate times velocity at the inlet. So minus mass flow rate, or and I can put the beta term here too. So this is minus 1.03 times mass flow rate which is 30 kilograms per second times the velocity at the inlet which we don't know yet so let's calculate the velocity at the inlet I'm gonna do that in the uh, upper right hand corner here so mass flow rate by definition is density times cross-sectional area times velocity so this is 30 kilograms per second our density is 1000 our cross-sectional area is pi over 4 times 0 0.4 squared times velocity. Oh, I'm sorry. I wrote the elevation. So this is 0 0.1 squared. Okay. That's the diameter of our pipe. So if we solve for our velocity, our average velocity here, our average velocity is going to come out to be 3.82 meters per second. Now that we know that, we can use that here. Our inlet velocity and also our exit velocity, since they're the same, are 3.82 meters per second. What about this side of the equation? What are the forces acting in the x direction there? Well, remember, we have a gauge pressure there, right? we have a pressure acting to help push that water through so we also want to know what is the force acting to hold this in place so let's say we want a bolt that's going to be able to hold it acting in this positive direction I'm guessing the direction if it comes out negative we know that it's moving in the other direction okay so this is to the right I want a bolt that holds it to the right with that force and we also have a pressure helping to push this fluid through this pipe here. Okay, So the force is going to be force in the x direction minus the force associated with the flow. So we're going to have, let's go ahead and put plus P1A1. So we have some force helping to push this flow through our system here. Okay, And this is all equal to minus 1.03 times 30 times 3.82 all right so our F direction force is going to be minus 3924 times our area pi over 4 times 0 0.1 squared okay minus 1.03 times 30 times 3.82 so our F total F direction force is going to be negative 148.8 newtons this negative sign means we just guessed the direction wrong at the beginning so it's actually going to be to the left so this force actually will be acting to the left okay let me make that change up here too. So this will actually be acting to the left. Okay. Let's finish this problem. We also need to calculate what the Y force is going to be, right? So let's do that. So the sum of the forces in the Y direction is equal to our sum of 
everything that's coming. So we could put beta times mass flow rate times velocity. And this is just again from the Reynolds transport theorem. We can simplify it and rewrite it like this. So this would be out. This would be in. Well, what do we have in the y direction? What do we have coming in? We have nothing coming in in the y direction. So this is 0. We're neglecting the force of the weight of our water in our pipe. And we're going to guess that the force we need, let's say it's coming up like this. We're going to guess it's positive y, that our bolt needs to support it going upwards, positive y. So we're going to say force in the y direction is equal to 1.03 times the mass flow rate times the velocity, which is the same at the inlet and the exit. Okay, so some forces in the y direction are going to be 118 newtons. Okay. So you see what this would be, be enable you to do, okay? It would enable you to be design a system where you could um, be able to support a certain weight, not only the weight of the object, all right, but also the momentum associated with the flow. So it's going to come in and it's going to push this pipe and you need something to support it or something that would resist it in a certain um, um, force in this direction. And you need to be able to calculate that if you want this pipe to hold up. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Um, I enjoyed it, uh, working with you throughout the semester and I hope to see you in some future classes.